Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a fireball ability using the gameplay ability system, otherwise known as GAS. So I'm gonna to go to games, create a blank third person template project using blueprints, and I'll call this fireball GAS and hit create. Once that's open, I'm gonna head over to edit, go to plugins and look for gameplay abilities like so, and then I'll hit restart to restart the project. Now, once my project's restarted, I'm gonna head over to the Epic Marketplace and look for the permanently free collection and I'm going to look for an asset called FX Variety Pack, which will have our little fireball element as here. And I'm just going to add this to the project. And now I'm going to head over to Mixamo.com and actually add some animations of us casting a spell. So when I go to Mixamo.com in the search, I'm just going to look for spell. And there is a 13 magic spell pack animation over here consisting of 13 animations. And I'll hit download and I'll download this as 60 frames per second and click download here. And now when I extract the zip, You'll see all the files as such, even our XBOT FBX. So I'm going to head over to content, right click, create a new folder, and I'll call this anims. I'll double click to go into anims, and then I'll just, I'll double click to go into anims, and then I'll drag our XBOT FBX and click import all. And just for the XBOT first, just so we have the skeleton ready. And now I'm just going to select all the animations, drag this in, and I'm going to make sure that that XBOT skeleton is checked and click import all. And once these are all imported, I'm just going to select all the animation sequences by left clicking the first one and shift clicking the last one, right clicking, and I'm going to retarget these animations. And I'll target the skeletal mesh that we're currently using on our third person character, which is the SKM Quinn simple, like so. And you can double click any of these animations to preview how it's going to look on your character. So I'll hit control A or hold control and click A to select all of these. And I'll click export animations. And for the prefix, I'm just going to do something like A underscore and select the anims folder and export all of these here. And the one that I'm specifically gonna be using is this A standing 1H magic attack 01, like so. So as you can see, it's him just throwing out a spell. And I wanna make sure that the spell actually throws out when the hand reaches around here. So I'll go to content and then I'll right click in my content browser and under blueprint class, I'll select blueprint class and under all classes, I'm gonna look for gameplay ability, like so. And I'll hit next and I'll call this something like GA underscore fireball. And I'll double click to open this up. And now what we want to do is we'll notice quite a few things. So class defaults will be selected and you'll see on the right, we have these ability tags and a bunch of tags that we can worry about. And for the purpose and easeability of this tutorial, I'm only going to worry about this one ability tag, which is going to reference our GA underscore fireball. So when I click this drop down, I can click on this green plus icon to add certain tags. So I'll add one called spell.fireball and the source will be our gameplay, our default gameplay tags.ini, which we can also edit from our project files itself. But for this case, we're just going to keep it all in blueprints. So I'll click add new tag and make sure this is selected. If you wanted to add multiple spells, you can simply just go to the name and do something like spell dot, let's do ice wall, for example, and hit add tag. And you'll see that it'll automatically add under your spell over here. So it'll nest however many times you name something as long as you add a period in between the names. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be selecting that spell.fireball. And all we wanna do is when we activate this ability using event activate ability, we're gonna play a montage and wait. And I wanna go back and actually create an animation montage. And we wanna create a montage to add some notifiers. And these notifiers will give information and data to our animation in order to tell our ability when to actually spawn and launch. So I'll head back to my animations that we were looking at. And if you still have this tab open, you, do, you can hold control and B in order to go directly to that folder. So I'll right click and under create, I'll click create and montage and I'll call this AM underscore spell attack. So I'll double click to open this up. And now we can see the exact same animation and we have this notify track over here, which is how we're gonna be passing data to our character and our spell on when to actually launch our spell around here. And now when I go back to GA Fireball, I can select that montage that we created by clicking on this drop down. And now I'll drag this out. And basically, whenever we play this montage, I want to spawn an actor from a class. And this class is going to be our Fireball actor that we need to create here. So I'll head back to my third person map, go to content, right click blueprint class, click actor. And I'm going to call this BP underscore Fireball. And I'll double click to open this up. And you'll notice quite a few things like our details panel has a bunch of stuff in it and along on the left what we're going to be modifying is actually just our components so I'll click add and I'm going to add a Niagara and I'm going to add a cascade particle system component and this will actually be our fireball and the reason why we're adding cascade is because that event pack 
or that FX pack that we imported is a bunch of cascade particle systems. And if you want to check it out or create whatever spells you want, here's your entire selection of spells that you're able to create in this tutorial. So for this case, we'll keep it as the fireball. And then I also want to add a component that's native to Unreal Engine called projectile movement. And this projectile movement will be able to tell our actor how it actually moves in the air. So we'll set an initial speed of 1000 and a max speed of 1000 as well. And then for gravity scale, I don't want this fireball to be coming down kind of like arrows or rocks or so on. So I'm just going to set this to zero. So I'm just going to set this to zero. So I compile and save, and that's all we need to configure in our BP Fireball. So I can actually close this out. And now I'll just select that class called BP Fireball. But now if I try to compile and save, we'll get some errors regarding our spawn transformation because we're not telling where to spawn this ability. And I actually want us to spawn it from our third person character. So what I'm going to do is drag out the play montage and wait, and I'm actually just going to cast this to our third person character. And the object that we're going to drag out is our get avatar actor from actor info. And this will determine which player is actually using this. And as BP third person character, we're actually going to get the mesh. And the mesh of the character is the actual character itself. So if I were to hit play, you'll see that this model that you see right now is the mesh that it's using. So from our mesh, I want to get a socket location because I don't want to just spawn it to from where the origin of my mesh is or from our feet or from the ground or whatever. I want to actually spawn it from our hand when we get to this stage. So in our animation montage on the top right, you'll see a bunch of assets over here that we can quickly navigate to. And the one I'll be selecting is the far left one, which is our SK underscore mannequin. And now if I were to scroll down, you can see all the names of the bones that this character uses. And I'm gonna look for hand, I'm gonna look for the right hand. And right here we have this one called hand underscore R. And when I go back to my gameplay ability fireball, I'm just gonna type this in in the in socket name so that it knows where to spawn from. But this spawn transform is not only calculating to get to separate our location, rotation, and the scale. So for the return value of the socket location, I'm going to make sure this is a spawn transform location. And then I also want to drag out the as BP third person character and actually just get the actor rotation. And this is pretty much telling us which direction we're facing. So the return value of this will go into the spawn transform rotation. And now when I hit compile and save, I can actually start using this fireball ability, but let's go ahead and test this out. So when I go back to my third person map, and if you're using the third person template like me, you'll see this tab called world settings. If it's not enabled, head over to window and click world settings. And down here, you'll see a game mode and under selected game mode, I can drop this down in order to see my default pawn class. This is just ensuring which default pawn class I'll be using for my demo. So I'll hit this magnifying glass with the folder behind it in order to find it in our content browser. And I'll double click to open this up. And you'll see quite a few default starter template stuff, such as adjusting our camera and assigning our controls, our movement input and our jumps and so on. What I want to do is add a component that comes with the gas framework called ability system. And I'll go ahead and add this ability system. And this is pretty much going to tell us which abilities our characters have from all the abilities that we create. And at the end of begin play, I want to add, I want to actually give this ability to our character. So I'll drag out from the add mapping context and look for give and look for give ability, which in parentheses, we're going to select ability system. And the ability that we want to give to our character is our GA underscore fireball. So I'll hit compile and save. And now under this, I just want to add a debug key for testing purposes of F. So when I click F on my keyboard, it'll do whatever is next. And in this case, it's just going to use our fireball. So now I'm going to drag out the press key. And as soon as we press it, I'm going to try to activate an ability by the class. And the class will be the exact one that we set up here which is going to be our GA fireball. So when I hit compile, save and go back to the third person map and then click F, you're going to see that our fireball actually starts from our character's right hand, which is correct, but it goes on too soon, but the fireball actually goes off too soon. We want it to happen after we shoot it outwards. And in order for us to do that, we need to create something called an anim notify. So kind of like we talked about notifies briefly in the animation montage, you'll see this notify section here that we can add to. And here we're going to be able to add some sort of event data telling our character when to receive this information. And then we also need to put it in our gameplay ability of when to actually spawn the actor. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to right click and at the content browser, go to blueprint class and look for an anim notify. And then I'll hit select and I'll call this an underscore spell attack. So I'll double click to open up this an underscore spell attack. And on the left, you'll see functions. Since we want to receive some sort of notification or some data, I'm going to click override and click on receive notify. 
And from here, for the mesh comp, we can just get the owner, which is going to be our actor component. And then from our actor component, we want to set the gameplay event. So from our get owner, we're going to send the gameplay event to the actor. And this actor will be an event tag, and we're going to be transferring the information through an event tag. So I'm going to right-click event tag and promote this to a variable, and I'll just leave the name as event tag. And I'll make sure I connect the execution pins properly. So I'll hit compile and save. And one more thing we need to do is event tag needs to actually be visible. And in order for us to make it visible, we can hit this eye icon over here. And now you'll see that instance editable is checked. And this tells us when to re actually receive the data and that we can actually plug in whatever event tag we want to. And now that this event tag is public or visible, now that this event tag is instance editable, I want to make sure that we have a way to tell our gameplay ability fireball to wait for that event to actually happen and when to receive the event. So after our play montage and wait, I'll drag this out and look for a wait gameplay event. In this event, we need to create a tag that's going to reference both the anim notify and this, because this is where it's going to help us proceed to the following steps. So once we get that information, we'll be able to proceed to the next steps. So I'll go ahead and create an event tag by clicking this arrow clicking the plus sign and I'll do something like event.montage.fireball. And then for the source, I'll add a default gameplay tags.ini and click add new tag and make sure this is selected. Now currently, this is just going to execute no matter what. Even after we just wait gameplay event, it's not actually going to wait till the event's received, which is why there's an execution pin here called event received. So I'm going to hold alt and click on this execution pin to unpin it and then I want to. I want this wait gameplay event to actually happen until we receive the event. So I'll just drag this to cast third person, so that once we get this event dot montage dot fireball, then we can proceed with the rest. And now one last step is actually to add this into our animation montage. And since we created an anim notify, we can add notifies in our anim montage under the tracks here. So you'll see this notify section in next to the one. If you wanted to add more, you can click on this track and add another notify track. And that's so you can have multiple things happen simultaneously. So I'll just right click on my tracks here and I'll add a notify, which is going to be our an underscore spell attack. And I want this to take place exactly when I want that fireball to launch, which is going to be right around here. And now you'll see that when I left click on this an underscore spell attack, there's an event tag here. And we want this event tag to match the one in our gameplay ability called event montage fireball. So over here, I'm going to select and actually before I select that, the reason why we made this instance editable earlier. So if we head back to our AN spell attack, this eye icon or checking this instance editable. And if I hit compile, if I uncheck this and go back to my spell attack, you'll see that now I can't actually pass that information here, which is why it's really important for us to make sure instance editable is checked, or you can simply do that by clicking this eye icon. So back to my animation montage, I'm just going to select that event montage fireball like so. And now that that's set, we can actually just use our fireball as is. So when I head back to my third person map and use this ability, it's going to cast the animation and only play at the end of that or where it's, it's only going to play when that information is received. So exactly when the hand sticks out. And that's a pretty simple tutorial on gas with blueprints. Thanks for watching Code of Grow. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.